okay we are going to discuss destination based uh, forwarding uh, that is a longest prefix matching through an example okay suppose as we have discussed that uh, in each router we have a forwarding table okay this is forwarding table in this forwarding table is built up by control plane okay so control pen can be per router as used in traditional routing protocol or it can be uh, centralized in software defined network so whatsoever is the control plane this con uh, whether it is a per router or whether it is a software defined networking so the control pen has to build up this forwarding table and this forwarding table is stored in each and every router okay so when a data packet so what does it stores so you can see that this forward this table stores the destination addresses at this router when a packet is received with the destination address this one for then it's for this destination ip address the best outgoing link or the best output port is port number zero similarly you can see that from this entry to this entry the outgoing port is 0 for the IP addresses from the range this to this if the destination IP address is in the range from this to this then the output port at this router is or yeah, the outgoing link is 1 similarly if the destination address is is from the range this to this then the outgoing port or the outgoing link at this router is 2 if the is a packet otherwise the packet is should be forwarded to outgoing port 3 okay so this is the forwarding table store now you can see that how many how many entries are here how many entries are here so you can see that in from this to this these bits are common the red one are common and these are different okay so how many are different 2 to power 11 these are 11 bits they are different 2 to power 11 from 00 to 11 so you can see 2 to power 11 means 2048 entries so these are 204 entries and for each entry the outgoing link is 0 the outgoing link is zero so here there are two zero four eight entries two zero four eight entries okay so this is not two entries this these are two zero four eight entries and for each entry the outgoing link is zero okay similarly for uh, for this there are two to power eight entries so there are five twelve entries so 2048 and 512 so 225 uh, 2500 something okay similarly for this one so you can see that how many entries are here so 204 entries 2048 entries here and 2048 entries here to 2048 and 2048 it becomes 4000 something and plus 500 so it is 4500 something entries here in the forwarding table okay so you know that when a packet arrives with a particular destination ip address suppose this is the ip address is this one so we have to match that ip address to each entries so in a table if we have more number of entries so it will take more time to look for to search for the matching in this table so if the table has 4000 entries 4500 entries and you want to perform matching so it will take some time it will wait it will take some time okay so we have another approach if we have one way is that that for each destination ip address we stored an entry okay this is the first approach that for each destination IP address we have to have an entry so in this case we will have 2,048 entries here 2,500 entries here and 2,048 entries here so this all makes up 4,500 some entries here in the table 
okay so another way is to use prefix matching that is you can see that that in this entries for these 2048 entries they have the same outgoing link zero and this 2048 entries the red one they are common they are com common prefix common prefix in the first bits are common so these are the first bits they are common and the remaining they are different so we can represent these 2408 entries through only single entry by using common prefix and wildcard common prefix means that which bits are common the first prefix bits that are common they are represented for example you can see these are the common prefix bits for these entries 204 entries and the remaining these are called host part so they can be represented through wildcard say exteric so this one entry so these 204 entries they can be replaced through one entry and for one entry we will have zero so if a packet arrives so we will see that okay this the packet destination address is matching we will match with common prefix we will match with common prefix and okay so we will match with the common prefix and then we will perform the decision so you can see that we will have a common prefix for this entries 204 entries one and for this uh, two, uh, 500 entries we will have one common prefix matching and for this we will have one common prefix matching so in this case we will have entries one two three entries and so using common prefix we will have three entries instead of having four thousand and five hundred entries so searching through 4500 entries it takes longer time and if we have three three entries then it will take less time so using this common prefix matching we can reduce the number of entries in the forwarding table so if we reduce the number of entries in the forwarding table then it will make faster lookup when we have to search in the table and we have less number of entries then the uh, then the lookup will be or with the searching will be faster okay and that's why that's why you can see that that when we assign the ip address in a network they are assigned consecutive they are assigned consecutive for example if you have in a, in a network there are two users one user will have ip address 192.1.1.1 the another will have 192.1.1.2 3 and 4 so so they have the car they have why this is because so that they can have more so that the the range they are divided up so that they have the common prefix more common prefix okay so that's why we do it so by common prefix i think it is easy so in destination based forwarding that the table that stored the destination ip addresses the forwarding table it store the destination ip addresses and its outgoing link information so one approach is that that for each destination ip addresses we have an entry so this will have in this case it will have 4500 entries and another approach is that that in the entries that have the same outgoing link we find their common prefix like this one for this one for these 204 ent entries we have common prefix this and the rest they are steric steric so using this only one entry we can have we can represent these 2048 entries so this is called common prefix matching common prefix matching so by using common prefix matching we can reduce the number of entries from 4500 entries to three entries one for this for this range we will have one common prefix for this range we will have another common prefix for this range we will have another common prefix and then for this entries so when the number of entries are reduced so it's the searching time in the table will be reduced 
and that's why uh, using due to this common prefix matching we when the network assign the IP addresses they are assigned a consecutive and other consecutive okay so now we are going to discuss if we have the common prefix matching then how the searching is performed in the network you can see that in if we have complete IP address not the common prefix so when a packet arrive with the particular IP address so we can we match it okay but here you can see in the common prefix there is some bits available they are specified but these static static they are not specified they are static static okay so we will discuss it that in common prefix matching how the searching is performed now suppose that the uh, we have performed the common prefix okay and now the number of entries are this one you can see that for 4500 entries in this table 2048 entries here 500 entries here 2048 entries here and one entry here so these are 2005 or uh, 4500 something entries okay so these 4500 entries they can be represented by using common prefix matching only four entries one for uh, this one this and this so these four entries are enough so if we have less number of entries then when we are packet arrive and we want to search as destination IP addresses and there are less number of entries four entries so then the searching will be faster the searching will be faster okay but the problem comes here that for example this packet is arrived the packet is arrived with the destination IP address this and we want to perf so we want that this entry match to which entry here this IP address is destination IP address A it match to which entry so you can see that up to here up to one this one up to here these entries common prefix are matching with this one zero rubber one it is matching with this one it is matching with this one okay so we use longest prefix matching it is matching with three entries up to one up to here it is matching with this entry with this entry and this entry but you can see the next bit that is the next bit is zero so this zero is matching with only this one it is not matching it is here one it is here one so with so we have the that uh, so in a common prefix so when a packet arrives so we compare with each entry but we take only that one to which it has more matching more longest prefix matching the first bit that are more number of first bits that are matching the more number more number of first bits matching so in this entry it has zero and this entry this packet also have zero and here it has one it here here one so here it has one more entry this packet has one more entry matching with this one so for this packet the it the it is matching with this one exactly the more it has more bits matching with this entry so then as compared to this entry and this entry okay so this packet this packet will be forwarded the action will be taken that it it match with this entry exact more so it it will be forwarded on the link zero okay now you can see that if a packet arrives with the destination IP address this okay so up to now zero triple zero one triple zero one so up to now these bits are matching with this entry with this entry with this entry it is matching here okay but you know so but you know we have to move to next bit so next bit is one one triple zero so here it is also one and here is zero so this entry is not matching this entry is matching one and one here we have one so this one is matching with this one and this one okay now we have to move to next bit next bit is zero here the next bit is zero and here it is wildcard so here it is zero so it is matching with this one so in this and with this entry the this, this destination address is matching with this one because here it matches with the more number of prefix bits so here we have longest prefix matching so for this packet for this packet it matches with this entry and 
it will be forwarded on the link one so so when we have the common prefix the interest in the using common prefix in addresses then we have to perform when we are looking for a forwarding table entry for a given destination address we use longest address prefix that match the destination address so we have explained this through an example okay now longest prefix matching we will discuss that uh, we will see why longest prefix matching is used shortly when we discuss uh, addressing that we will discuss that why in a network the addresses are assigned consecutive okay longest prefix matching it is also basically it is that entries they are stored in a uh, memory technology we call it tk okay ternary content addressable memories so it is faster so uh, it, it and it has but it uh, it has for example in a cisco catalyst switches the the forwarding table it can contain 1 million entries it can contain 1 million entries so this is faster but it is very expensive okay so that's why we use limited tkm memory okay so we will why we uh, perform a prefix matching so we will also discuss it later on as well okay so we have discussed that the prefix matching basically the prefix matching it reduced the number of entries in the forwarding table from 4500 entries to just four entries okay so when prefix when the address is aware, when the forwarding table the entries are stored in using prefix matching and when the packet arrives then the packet is matched with the entries that has longest prefix matching that has the longest prefix matching with the address that one entry will match to the packet and the packet will be forwarded according to the outgoing link okay now as we have discussed uh, that in the router we have uh, actually uh, three things okay in the router we have uh, 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 three things number one is input port when a packet arrives in a port this port is called input when a packet arrives then the router examine the header that what is the destination IP address in the packet and then their destination IP address is look up in the forwarding table okay for example the destination IP address is 0 triple 1 so for 0 triple 1 which is the outgoing link for example the forwarding table it is 4 okay so the packet is now forwarded from this port to port number four okay so when the packet is moved from input port to output port this is done by switching fabrics so the switching fabrics basically it moves the data from input port to output port after the output port is decided for a packet then the switching fabrics it moves the data from input port to output port so switching fabric a transfer packet from input buffer to appropriate output buffer that is from input port to output port so when the packet is arrived in an input port and its outgoing exit link is decided after that the packet is moved from input port to output port so this functionality or this service is performed by switching fabrics now this switching fabric it should be faster it should be faster if it is slow that is the packet moving from the input port to output port it is slow if it is slow then here the packet will be stored in the queue if for example four packets are arrived per second in in an input port and the switching fabric it can move only one packet at a time so the four packet arrives and one packet is moved forward so three packet will be stored in the queue and when this queue becomes the full and subsequent packet arrive then those packets will be discarded okay so for switching fabrics we have three types of switching fabric techniques one is called memory one is called bus and one is called crossbar okay so we will discuss memory bus and crossbar okay so what is it so you have understand switching fabric this switching fabrics means that 
when a packet arrives in input port and the uh, router decides the, that the packet now has uh, the decides the output port for the packet then the packet is moved from input port to output port so the packet move from input output port from input port to output port this is performed by switching fabrics so for switching fabric we have different techniques so basically we will discuss memory bus and cross bar approaches okay now switching fabrics why memory so in this approach how it works it is basically uh, that you know that a router it is basically a computer system it, it can be like a, uh, we have different in, uh, units and these units are interconnected through system bus okay so when a packet arrives in input port the packet is examined okay uh, that what is its destination IP address the destination IP address is look up in the look uh, in the uh, table okay if the matching entry is found that for example the this input port uh, packet it should be forwarded to the output port okay so when a packet arrive at input port that packet is stored in the memory that packet is stored in memory so when the packet is stored in memory then it is from input port it is forwarded to the memory by using system bus okay now the input port is now the packet is to be examined that for example the packet has arrived and uh, uh, what is the destination address of ip uh, of the this packet and that destination ip address will be look up in the forwarding table for example the port number it should be forwarded to the port number this this output port now the packet will be taken from the memory and it will be forwarded to the output port okay so uh, you can see this one when packet arrives these packets are stored in memory and now the packet are stored in memory now it is decided that which should be what should be its output port so it is decided by looking up by by first examining the header the destination IP address of the packet and then that packet is the destination IP address is look up in the forwarding table and if the forwarding table the F output port is this one now the packet will be moved from memory to this output port so the packet are copied to the system memory when the packet are arrived in the input port they are copied to the system memory and they are copied through system memory when the packet is moved from system uh, from input port to system memory this is done by ex by moving through the system bus so after deciding the output port for this packet the packet are moved from memory to output port this packet is moved okay so now what is its limitation the speed is li limited by memory we know that the memory is slow memory is slow so if the memory is slow and the packet arriving they are faster okay the packet arriving are fast and this uh, okay but the memory is slow okay so then it will take longer time so memory is normally slow the memory is longer normally very slow okay so that's why it is very slow and second is that the speed is limited by memory payment and we have two bus crossing per diagram means that when the packet arrive first the data has to move from input port to memory so they are accessing the system bus they are accessing the system bus. and when the output port is decided then the data is read from memory and then it is moved through output port by accessing the system bus so this time also the system bus is used so you can see that the memory is normally slow so that's why this scheme is slow okay we have another technique that is called switch fabri uh, switching fabrics through bus okay in this approach we have the input ports and output port they are connected by using a bus a hardware a line okay when the packet is arrived and at an input port okay 
the the header field uh, the destination IP address in the packet is examined and then it is looked up in the forwarding table if the forwarding table has the port number two okay then the packet is moved from this port to this port by moving by sending the packet on this bus okay so when the packet is moved on this bus so it will ha it will move from here from this end to this end each output port will examine the packet because the packet has the port number two so this port will not accept this packet and this port is true so it will accept this packet and this port will also discard it okay so the datagram from input port memory to output port memory by a shared bus that is the packet move from input memory from input port memory to output memory by using this shared bus and what is bus it is basically connect this input output port but there is a problem this is called bus contention because this bus can be used by one packet at a time so if this port is forwarding packet to this port so it is moving from this link to this link so this link is busy so no other port can forward the their data packet they have to wait they have to wait so this bus can be used by one input port at a time but okay so if more than in two input ports they want to forward the data then they have to wait they have to the one uh, packet will be forwarded on the system bus and the other has to wait okay so this is this is faster than mem main memory because memory access memory read and write are very slow okay but this is faster however here the problem comes that when the one packet is forwarded on the system bus the other has to wait okay and this technology is used in the cisco 5600 uh, and its speed is like this one okay uh, another technique that we have uh, it is called uh, switching y interconnection network this is called crossbar approach in this crossbar approach you can see that the input port output port they are linked through this crossbar okay this is the output port okay so basically in the system bus we have discussed that when two input ports they want to transmit the data so the one input port data will be transmitted and the other has to wait so it removes this limitation how you can see that this input port for example wants to transmit data to this output port so it will move like this way okay and this input port want to transmit data to this output port. so it will move like this way so these two data packet they don't intersect with each other so these two packets can be forwarded at the same time okay so this is the advantage okay but the disadvantage is there that we have more number of links we required more number of links so the, its structure is complex okay so it overcomes the bus bandwidth limitation that is in the bus in the last slide we discussed that in the bus uh, uh, in the bus uh, using the uh, bus is a uh, uh, for uh, is a uh, for uh, switching uh, fabric technique then it uh, one uh, input port can forward the data at a time okay but here in the uh, crossbar approach two or more than two can forward the their data packet provided their data packet don't intersect in the crossbar okay we have different types of banyan networks crossbar and other interconnection networks that initially developed to connect processor in the multipurpose so based on those concept this crossbar was developed so it is advanced design and uh, the fragmenting the datagram into fixed length cells and uh, switch cell through the fabrics you can see that this uh, the uh, input port and output port they are connected through the uh, crossbar in this way so uh, if the two input ports they want to tr uh, transmit the data to two different in output port and they don't intersect in the crossbar then they can be forwarded at the same time so this is basically used in the cisco 12000 series okay so this is the speed of 60 gbps through 
achieved through this interconnection so you can note that when a uh, when a network engineer it has uh, it wants to purchase a router so rather than looking at the input number of input ports and output port the also it is very important to look at it how the switching fabric is is performed if it is performed through memory then it will be very very slow if it is performed through memory it will be very very slow if it is performed through bus it will be faster than via memory but it is also slow because one input port can forward the data at a time but if it is used cross barring then it can then more than two uh, input port they can forward the data to two different output ports if they are not intersecting in the cross bar okay